Okay, so we're going to do chapter 19 and chapter 20 today. Um, and they'll finish off the less of the documentation, basically. Um, oh, before we do, Urtica ferrox, it's like a New Zealand tree nettle. So it's a yeah. nettle that um, is basically the size of a human and people can die if you, you bump into it as well. My like God, what? <laughs> giant, giant, giant nettle tree with massive spines. Super yeah. cool. <laughs> Um, but anyway, oh. off forest ecology now. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. New Zealand is so great. Like, come on. <laughs> um, right. So we'll go through um, readme files and news files and what information to include in them, um, who the files are targeted towards, and some of the functions we can use in the users package to automate the creation of them and, and create templates. Um, and you can all see the, the slides, okay? Yep. Cool. Um, so there are two important documents um, other than, you know, vignettes, function documentation, articles, those kind of things. And those are the readme.md files and the news.md files. Um, they don't have to be in a, a .markdown file, um, but they strongly recommend it because then it works natively with things like GitHub and, and other online platforms. Um, they can be in text files as well. And so the readme file um, is the one we'll cover first. And it's targeted towards a new user who might have just stumbled across your package and is wondering whether it can help them with their, their problem. Um, it's super important file for CRAM and package down sites and GitHub. Um, and we'll cover sort of package down sites and, and GitHub and stuff um, in the next chapter. Um, and they go way back to the early days of computing. And I came across this example from uh, 1974, which I can just share. Just share screen too. Uh, which was using Fortran and stuff. Um, and I Googled the name of this thing and it's like this big giant tower of, of computing thing that probably does the same thing as an Arduino would do nowadays, um, but includes some instructions on how to, what it does, um, how to use it. It uses tape decks. So I think those were like cassette cartridges back in the day, um, runs on Fortran and um, it wishes good luck. Me good luck at the end. So <laughs> thank you, Ashley. Yeah, um, so it's, it's, yeah, goes back a long, long history kind of thing. Um, in essence, a readme file tells someone who has come across a package, a high level description of it, of what it does. Um, a couple of simple examples of common problems that your um, package solves and the installation instructions, which should basically be um, copy and paste code, so something like install.packages and the name of your package kind of thing and how to load the library. And then an overview of the main components of, of a package. And a good example of, of a readme is um, you can see in dplyr, I'll put a link here if you want to look at that later. Um, Markdown files, as I mentioned before, play nicely with CRAN, GitHub and package down sites. Um, but because we want to include examples in our, um, in our readme file, um, it might be nice to do it in a .rmd file because that allows us to run the R code and generate the, the output and, and render it. Um, so we can actually write it into an RMD file and then um, there's a use this function that will basically convert it and render it into an MD file that can be used on GitHub. Um, and then basically if you do that, everything you do um, needs to be done in the .rmd file if you create and do an update in the future. Um, it has a YAML header at the top, um, which will, in that YAML header, you specify the output as a GitHub underscore document, and that basically creates the, the .md file, uh, which will work nicely in GitHub. Um, the, the function use underscore readme underscore rmd um, also does some other things. So um, other than creating a readme, a little template file for you, which gives you some little headers that you can start filling out. 
um, it also adds the file to the dot to our build ignore file um, because we don't want it to be included in our package. We just want the MD file to be included in our package. Um, if we need to make changes to the readme file, then we do edit that RMB file. And then you just basically do the build readme um, uh, call in DevTools and they'll generate the, the updated.md file for you. Um, if your package is also a Git repo, uh, then there's a pre-commit hook um, that compares your .rmd file to the .md file. Um, and in that case, if your .rmd file is more uh, recent than your old um, .md file, it will show you a warning, which makes you go, oh, okay, maybe I need to, need to run this um, DevTools build readme file uh, call again. And it did mention that the, I think the pre-commit hook, it's, I think you need to regenerate that each time um, by basically calling the original use readme dot under, uh, sorry, use underscore readme underscore rmd file, uh, sorry, call again. Um, but I didn't quite understand how that works. I just think it's a static thing and you need to do it each time. I'm just like reading like the, the function. And uh, like you said, like if you have like, uh, it's use use git to call the use git awk, that's going to use basically a shell file. So uh -huh. it's, it's probably very low to the ground. Uh, that it return, it's invisible. So what it return is, like, right. uh, it's kind Sorry. of like, uh, I mean, it's not necessarily complicated, but like, yeah, I don't know. It load, uh, I will have, uh, you can do what, if I, you can't understand what it does bef uh, without reading, like what's do the readme RMD pre commit that shell. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's probably, yeah. I think like the logic of the script is what you describe it. I mean, uh, but I don't know how to do it because uh, it's in file outside of the function. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like a bash script or something that's yeah. running, I guess. So right. That's why it's, it's unclear. I mean, unclear. Yeah. it's probably clear, but not for me now. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I trust that it works. <laughs> yeah. Me, me, also, me, also. <laughs> me also. Yeah. Me also. Just like it's in it's just like the, they are better than me. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So there's that's a readme file, which is all pretty easy. And then there's the news.md file. Um, and that's aimed at existing users. It could also be called a change log. Um, and mm -hmm. it just shows any changes that you a user might want to find more out more about. Um like the readme files and recommend you use the .md files. Um, but because we're not running any code in it, as far as I can see, um, you don't need to do a .rmd file and convert it to an md file. Um, and as usual, you can just use that use this function, which is use underscore news underscore md, um, which will generate a little template for you, but it doesn't have Cray one, yes, and it doesn't have like nice headed um, sort of headers or templates. So um, we'll discuss a little bit about what you should include in there. Um, I also mentioned this many other lifecycle release related functions in the DevTools ecosystem will make appropriate changes to news or MD as your package evolves, but it didn't mention what those are. Um, I'm assuming there's some functions, maybe it puts stuff in there for you. I couldn't see how it does that or what they were. So, yeah, I was wondering if, if either of you happen to know more about that or. No, I don't. It seems as obscure. Yeah. But I no, guess right. it's like if you deprecate or supersede, right? That's like life cycle mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. And then release what? Is that like the version? Is that yeah. stored somewhere else? Yeah. So it's probably because... just like linked. Yeah, this is the thing I could see. It all looked very like manually entered rather than things being automatically populated. So that was why I was a little bit unsure of how it would deal with that. Yeah. 
I guess they never mentioned in the documentation, like, is there a flag for deprecation of things? I don't hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. They did mention this that one package. I don't remember. I remember I was presenting. <laughs> um, <laughs> life cycler. I don't know something. Yeah, but yeah, no the 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 flag like you have on the top of the readme probably like if you change mm -hmm. it, it will automatically generate like new version. But then you still add to do like, for example, if you create a new function, do you think it will add it to the new version? If you update the version, et cetera, et cetera, it create, does it create like, you know, some, we'll have to try, but one yeah. stuff that's always bother me with, I mean, the, the good stuff is their workflow is, is always so clean. Yeah. You know, the whole workflow, the default is when you are a bit outside of the workflow, you need to understand a bit more how it works so you can like uh, re-jump into your <laughs> workflow. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because like a maintaining package that have been like not, I mean, yeah, build another way. I know it's a lot of, um, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. But the still way... like, this is well synced. <laughs> if you yeah. follow the step. Yeah, and that's the thing is, it's like I know it'll work. It's just there's some like little bits like this. I, just, yeah. it makes it sounds like there's some automatic thing, but because it tells you to, like you're basically yeah. typing in how you should structure yeah. it. I'm like, well, I'm not sure how how it would work or keep the same format I'm doing. Um, yeah, yeah. It looks like maybe in the next section they'll talk about life cycle. So maybe. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're true. A lot of this stuff, it does talk about things that are happening in future sections, which gets a bit confusing. <laughs> Always so yeah. hard to decide what to talk about first. Yeah, definitely. So um, in terms of structuring your news file, um, you should use a top level heading for each version and have the most recent one at the top. So your development version would normally be at the top. Uh, and if you have lots of changes, you can use uh, subheadings to break it up as well. And if you have a, if the change is related to an issue that was on GitHub, if you include the pull request number and the username, that lets people that are interested go back and find what the issue was and get some extra context around what's going on, um, which all seems pretty straightforward and, and easy to do. And they've got a. <laughs> I imagine some literacy, some people like, well, instead of doing a bullet list, like write old, <laughs> old fashioned, yeah. I went yeah. to the pool, then I decided that it wasn't time to update my package. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just some picture, like a, a nice espresso yeah. in hand and a cigarette. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Day but I get the bullet list ma makes sense outside of that. Yeah. Cool. And they've got a example with Ghiblis and Scrubbles and provable Scrubbles and so forth. Cool. Um, and the other thing they point out is to get in the habit of um, of doing this um, because it's easy to forget to do it. I know it would be kind of like I, I have like a research journal and I always forget to go in and do it and then I get to you know, at the end of the week, I'm like, oh, I've missed three days and try to remember what I actually did. So if you get in the habit of doing it, which is easy to say, but <laughs> they do have a, a thing, um, they do have a recommendation. If you're using something like a um, Git, you can use Git diff to compare between versions and it'll show you all your commit messages, providing you do regular <laughs> commit messages, which is the other thing. Um, that will I, kind of I use, help I use you. Git diff a lot. No. Yeah. Even more yeah. than uh, you can specify file. It's super easy. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Totally yeah. recommend it. I, I, I was using Git diff for this because I ran a couple of the um, like the create the readme template just yeah. to see what it looks like, and then it put it all into. I forgot I was in this you know branch of 
doing it in a cradle these files <laughs> and I was like oh were they there originally or not and so yeah <laughs> I did a get diff and checked and then deleted them all in safety yeah <laughs> yeah um, and it does remind you if you're going to do use this and I think use release issue to you know push up your package it will remind you to polish the news file as well so there are prompts to remember and that's that's the main thing about those two files in this chapter so it was quite straightforward I don't I there's it went into some more detail on on some things but um I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to add but I suppose we can jump onto websites I think it's it's like one example like I try use this uh, use release issue now just like opening R into my home directories obviously my home directory is not a project so it's yeah. like a warning saying hey, it's not a project come on organize yourself yeah yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. I just wanted like to check the list and I guess the the first part the first part is like hey don't try to trick me <laughs> yeah Definitely. but yeah it's a good example like if you do not follow like because sometimes i work in vs code so i do not have the project i mean i have the vs <laughs> code project and then <laughs> i do not yeah. have that. anyway but yeah yeah i've dabbled in vs code but it's uh, when you're used to like using r studio or like arduino ide then you jump into vs code and i'm just like oh what did, like why everything's ever in different places and... yeah <laughs> VS Code mm -hmm. is kind of a Christmas tree. I feel every time I jump. Yeah. It. It's like, woo. But it is really cool. Like there's some really cool stuff you can do in it. But <laughs> yeah, it's 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 good. Like if you uh, outside of air, it's very convenient. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. What I might do is stop sharing and then reshare. So John, I don't know if you do did you do you know if you're doing like two chapters in one, does he split the videos up or I don't know. I, I don't think idea. he will. Cool. Maybe I won't then. <laughs> okay, John, split. <laughs> there was a big enough gap. Yeah. That he yeah. Just... <laughs> if he wants to, he could it. Yeah. I imagine that's probably going to be too much work anyway. <laughs> cool. So the website, which is, I guess once you're building your website, it's kind of like, yeah, my package is done. Or, you know, the main thing is done and now I can celebrate by doing cool stuff like making a pretty website and, and create the hex logo and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But for this chapter, it's basically it, it, why a website benefits your package. Um, how, again, some handy commands we can use to, to generate the website um, automatically and a workflow on how to publish the website. Um, onto the internet so other people can look at it and some optional extras to customize your package down site. Um, so uh, package has many different documents that we've gone through already and a website provides a really nice way to sort of pull these all into one place and allow a user to easily navigate between them. I don't know if you've ever gone onto like GitHub and um, You've been trying to find the website for like something like deep ISA and you end up on like the readme thing you know it's like oh how do i get to the which you know which part which rmd file or md file do i click on next to look at um but you go to the website and it's just everything's there it's easy to navigate makes it makes it nice um there's a package called package down pkg down and it contains lots of functions that make things super easy, um, uh, providing that your package has a valid structure, which if you've been following this book, everything is nice <laughs> <laughs> and you haven't been manually adjusting things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, to initiate the site, you can use a um, function from users called use package down. Um, you just run it once and it'll create a minimal setup uh, where you can then start to use package down. Um, so what it does is it creates a .yml file, um, which is the main config file for package down. You can go in there and change things that will affect your website and structure your website. Um, it also adds things like the .yml file 
to the R build ignore so it doesn't get shipped with your, your package. Um, and it adds the docs folder to doc get ignore. And that basically co ops you into building and deploying your website in the way that they suggest, which is using GitHub Actions and Pages rather than doing it locally. And so your docs folder will basically just become a, a place where you can locally preview your website before you push it into the GitHub. Um, the step after that is to render your site. So you'll basically use um, the build underscore site function from package down, and you'll use that repeatedly to render your website locally so you can see how it looks. Um, and it should just open your website in the default browser you have uh, uh, for it locally, that is. And you can also look in the docs directory and you'll see all the files that will make up your, your package's website. Um, and that's it, basically. You've got a bare bones locally rendered website, but to get deployed to the internet, um, you need to do some more steps. And this, the easiest way to do this is using Git and um, pushing the things you've done to GitHub, um, thereby hosting your package on GitHub. And you can then use GitHub Actions to run the, the build underscore site um, function we talked about earlier. Um, every time you push a change to GitHub, and that basically just re-renders the, the site with your new changes and um, then presents it by GitHub pages um, and creates a static website. So it's really easy. I've done this to make my own like personal research portfolio website. I don't know if you've done anything similar, but it's super easy to do. Um, I didn't end up using GitHub Actions and GitHub Pages. I think I used a different site because you can do some fancier stuff in it. Um, but there's a great blog. I might actually link the blog in there later um, on how to do that if you're also interested in just creating like a, a research portfolio or, or CV kind of website. Yeah, I did but my own blog down with Netlify mm. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did say, in fact, the, the way I did it was I used Quarto because originally it's recommended to use Blogdown and I was like, oh, I should learn Quarto. So I, I decided to learn Quarto using, using that and same with Netlify, Net yeah. Um, and the other strategy, but not from GitHub, I published myself on uh, web servers that I own instead of going but like one of the stuff that should be noted is even if your repo is private mm -hmm. uh, package uh, if your org does not pay whichever github uh, tire is they will publish it they will automatically deploy oh it. really so oh, even if you do me. not set up uh if you do not set up even if you do not set up any kind of github action uh, if for whatever reason GitHub detect that you can publish it uh, in GitHub, by, like um, they will publish it. Yeah. So I just uh, covered that on my on my job. <laughs> <That> was... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is see fine. I mean, it's it's not that a big deal, but like yeah. uh, you know, it's, the web is is very full of other stuff. But yeah. uh, it's something to and um, it does not have like this is Git. This is not you who are uh, like when you are pushing a new version that publishing. It's basically a board that's called GitHub page that come and see if if it can deploy it. If it's can deploy it, deploy it. Hmm. And I think this is relatively new policy. Right. But, That's good uh, to know. Yeah. I mean, imagine there being problems if you're like a consultant working on a client's project or something that's supposed to be private and you didn't realize it's all being published. To, yeah. To GitHub pages. Yeah. That's it. But if you set up like your own GitHub action, I assume like the bot will not mess with that and then yeah. it will be good. Hmm. I have, haven't, sure. yeah, this is. I was surprised by that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good to know in advance. <laughs> um, it's got a, so use this also has a, um, a function that sort of basically makes a little pipeline to do this all for you. Um, it's just use package down GitHub pages. 
and you call it once and it'll run through several steps and it's all it's all fairly straightforward but if you miss something it, things can go wrong um i guess you then just call it again and, and start from the beginning but it'll basically initialize an empty orphan branch in your github repo and that's called yeah. github yeah. pages i also think it's rely on github token i'm not sure all oh, right oh uh, yeah I'm would not you sure, like would, yeah would you have to create github token if you use I'm, like I'm checking the documentation I'm checking like the function if that is ask that but I don't yeah. I think for a lot of it, it it's rely on having like a github token and having your uh yeah. session connected to it like I don't know like uh, your R environments or whatever the stuff where is the story mm -hmm. but it need to to know like access to this token and this token usually have a time limit so you have to redo it yeah yeah and it's not All like right. I'm against it I know nothing about it yeah. it's just like yeah. A lot of time I use just the command line tool with SSH, yeah. and not the GitHub uh, token. So yeah. I had to use the GitHub token for a lot of this uh, function. Yeah. I That's don't know which same, one you yeah. use or not, but it's, yeah. Yeah. I use SSH for like all my stuff. I just do command line and use SSH and it's super easy. But for the book club stuff, I've been using like what they've suggested with the yeah. um, users package and mm -hmm. girt and stuff and um th for that i did have to set up a token um but it has just been working pretty pretty straightforward yeah, it works like it just like if you're obstinate and say yeah. no i don't want to <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you will you will run into some trouble I yeah. mean, it's not clear which one you need it for not needing it so mm, i mean to myself yeah. but uh yeah no it's a good point because they didn't actually mention anything about that i imagine you're prompted at some yeah. point during the work yeah yeah you, but... you are prompted if you use it like there's a like oh you want to use like uh, and they, they they send you the link to to set up i i have done it so i was like uh, <laughs> against the, the the rules and then the yeah. uh, the, the the function is well written and this oh you should go here to set up your and do that yeah so this is all, wh why i know it yeah yeah and so, like, I get once you've got that token and stuff, it, I'm assuming you can connect fine to GitHub and create this repo page, um, which is the GH. Uh, sorry, not a page. Um, create a branch called GH dash pages, which is just GitHub pages. Um, the branch only exists on GitHub, and um, you, there's no need to sort of like download it locally because it's it's just used by um, the GitHub the actions and GitHub yeah. pages yeah and only tracks oh sorry you got yeah no your token the token is the way that you can connect to github api i think right mm. and i do not think you can do that with ssh oh but like i'm not knowledgeable enough yeah yeah i, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember the user thing like when you're setting up git with users so it asks you for all that kind of like the github token and and those kind of things. I'm wondering if it you they're assuming you've just set it up in that situation. Good to go. I can't tell you. I've just started <laughs> like to read more a bit more about that and it's kind of a rabbit hole, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so the branch only exists on GitHub and it'll track the files that make up the website. So what we would see in the docs folder um locally. And it also turns on GitHub pages for your repo and um, points it to the GitHub pages branch that, that it created. It then copies the config file for a um, for the GitHub Actions workflow. GHA is just GitHub Actions workflow, and that shows up in the um, .github uh, workflows package down .yaml YAML um, file. Oh, does anyone know? Is there a difference between a YAM file and a YML file? I think they're the same. They're the same, eh? Yeah. Yep. I thought that might yeah. be the case. Is it like JPEG with an E and without? Yeah. A? That's I mean, what I was wondering. <laughs> YALM is a mess. Like, I think, like, the manual is like 11 chapters, something like that. So it's, it's a various version. 
So maybe it, it means something, you know. Yeah. But it's 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 like a fairly complicated. Like uh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 funny how stuff that want to be simple and that like. That's, <laughs> and the yeah. like the official yam well set like you know like and you have like yam 1.1 i think we are running on yam <laughs> 1.2 or whatever um yeah, yeah the, like i will post the link of it like if you want to if you want to go crazy of it it's 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 complicated stuff oh, i might leave that for bedtime reading when i need to yeah if sleep. you want to sleep like that's perfect <laughs> i see yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I guess it, it, all of this is done automatically. I'm just kind of curious because they use it several times, and I was like, oh, this, I always thought they were the same thing, but they do I think they are the same. Separate. But yeah, maybe not. You know, maybe like in some obscure path, like that. <laughs> yeah, as long as they both work. But um, you'll add what it um, once it does that config file. It'll also add the URL for your site to. Um, as the home page for your GitHub repo and the URL to your description and um, the package down.yml file as well. And that's important later for, um, for links, um, which we'll discuss a little bit later. Um, but because it does it automatically, providing you're following this process, it makes everything really easy later on. Um, it may take a couple of minutes to view your website, but um, just because GitHub Actions can take a little bit of time, but um, you should basically be able to go to that website URL, which will show up in the console output. And then um, you can basically look at your website and it's it's good to go. Um, the default URL is in that form, which I think remote stuff. Sorry, dog's scratching at the door. Um, <laughs> And yeah, username um, dot github dot io or slash repo name, which I think probably all come across in some form. And you've got a website, so sweet ass. But you could stop there, but you might want to make it look way cooler. And if so, you could get into like your your hex logos, which I think everyone's excited about. I went to see a um a number. For the one of the eHacker lectures, um, Hadley Wickham came and he had this big bag of hex stickers, which we all like ran mm -hmm. up at the end and <laughs> so rummaging through to get some, um, which was quite cool. At that time, I didn't know any of these packages, but I know them all now. So it's happy days. <laughs> um, and you can, yeah, yeah. They, are, they all <laughs> fit together. This is too nice. Yeah yeah <laughs> bring back the old 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 like stickers that does not match <laughs> well, i've got those ones there and on the back okay see the better <laughs> yeah yeah it's i must admit when i started putting these on and then i was like oh why did i put my like fig share sticker right there because now i can't fit anything else <laughs> yeah it's good if you've got a macbook as well because they stick nicely to the back the back of the MacBook. Yeah, I have a bunch yeah. on the back of this computer. Yeah, you can always spot academics because <laughs> the laptops will be covered in stickers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to get into like lots of details, there's a vignette um, that goes into a lot of detail on how to make it. Um, so hex logos, six sided logos, and stickers, everyone loves. Remo, but not maybe Olivia, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like, you know, ones. we, we, we that's cool that you are the one trend, but you can have other trend. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to design them, um, there's a website I've linked to here that um, oh has design specs and lots of pr sticker printing businesses from mainly from India and the US. And <laughs> There's an R package that designs everything for you. So you just give it the logo, like the image you want, and it'll fit everything nicely and put the word you want on it um, and then create it for you. And then you can use the another users function, which will take that logo, scale it, and chuck it into um, the figures folder in your man manual file. And then package down will discover that and add it to your site as well. So. It's all automatic and 
super easy. Um, then we get into like the functions reference, which is a little bit boring <laughs> compared to hex codes, but it's basically a um, reference folder and it will create a page for each function that has a .id file. So if you go back to function documentation, this is this stuff. Um, the package- I do that all the time. The function- Yeah, is <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's boring to create, but it's obviously very important for- <laughs> Yeah, so thanks for all the, I, I will be thankful now I got to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, package jam will execute and render all of the examples as well. So um, what that means is it, it basically executes all your code chunks that you've put into these um, into these function uh, manuals pages and um, make them look super nice. And that's a good opportunity to go in and check it because often when you've you know you've got what you think it looks good in your yeah, uh, studio yeah you know, r d file or whatever and in your mind that's going to look great but once you render it it's a different story so going back and checking it you can often pick up things you never considered think then fix and make nice go away dog um i'm sorry he knows there's people here oh he's gone now <laughs> he knows i'm talking to people and then wants all the attention but otherwise it's quiet for the rest of the day um Help topics um, will be linked in locations both within and outside of your site. So that's basically like if you go through, you can click on things and it'll take you to that file. Um, and if you think back to chapter 17 and recall enclosing functions in those square brackets mentioned in Roxygen comments, that's why it's basically, it can then pick up that this is something that will get hyperlinked to later on. Um, which makes it all super easy, I guess. And inbound links from other people's packages do require other work. Um, so firstly, it has to be published to CRAN. Um, the URL field in the description file must be populated with the URL of your package down site and GitHub repo and your um, .yml file, your config file for your website. Um, has to include the URL as well. So that's why I mentioned before, it's important um, that it does those things. Um, but because it generally does all that for you, you don't need to worry about it, providing you've been sort of following along how, how they suggest you do it. Um, you can organize things nicely. If you've got a really big package like dplyr, you can curate the functions. Otherwise, it just lists them all alphabetically. Um, so for dplyr, they've um, in your config file for your website. In dplyr, they're basically broken it down into subtitles by row. Um, and then they'll have the functions that that work on rows. And then they have a subtitle for columns and then pull your functions there that have um, yeah. have that. So it's pretty easy. Do you like this carrot after the description? What's that, sorry? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is something that I can totally see myself forget and spend yeah. many hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is the yeah. nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's also the vignettes and articles. Um, and if you remember, articles is a little bit annoying because there's either a very specific meaning to it or a very general meaning to it and they jump between the two in this chapter. Um, but on your website, you'll have an articles in the general sense menu, and that will list all your vignettes, um, which can be also linked to automatically. If you remember using vignettes, open brackets, the topic um, back in chapter 17, that's why you do it because then package down will detect that format it and automatically link it on your website as well. And the really cool thing is you can do that for other people's packages. Um, so providing you use vignette, some topic, and then um, be explicit in what package it's from, it will link to their stuff as well. I'm guessing providing they've done their description yeah. file with the, yeah, the URL. And that cool. kind of thing. Yeah. 
And if they do uh, not have, like, you can send a pull request or, or a new yeah, share yeah, package. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's link everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 Non-vignette articles, which are those, like, the specific ones I mentioned, um, you can't do that. You better you need to use a, a normal hyperlink thing. So that square brackets followed by normal brackets. Parentheses. Do it by hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Remo, stop. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think I need to take him for another walk. Um, make sure to use backticks and parentheses when you refer to a function in vignette or in vignettes. Um, so kind of they did say why to do that. And I've forgotten. To Can link. You remember? To, to link. The, right. I think it's to allow the link. Right. Yeah. And then you can just like before, they didn't really go into much detail on this, but you can also organize how it's indexed in that um, articles menu um, menu spot. So yeah. um, if you've got lots and lots of of vignettes, this is the one thousand like. Yeah, exactly. If you're a dplyr writer or a tidyverse <laughs> writer, then this is probably relevant. But it's basically. Most people are just going to use a handful of your functions, just show those ones. And then you could have a little section that says other articles in case they're interested, which they can go into to go into like the, you know, like the hardcore stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, if that is you, you can just do that and it'll tell you more about how to do that. But that is not me. <laughs> um, non vignette articles. So these are the, the specific ones I was mentioning. Um, this was kind of a weird section in the chapter because I felt you could probably just chuck this up into the like the vignettes, the non-vignette article mm -hmm. section of the vignettes chapter. Um, but it just explains why you might have non-vignette articles. It basically comes down to things you don't want shipped with the package bundle, usually because they have some really gnarly code or like need a big data file or something to, to execute. And that wouldn't be good to do on, say, GitHub page, uh, GitHub um, actions, or um, wouldn't meet CRAN's size constraints. Um, or sometimes they need authentication. So the Google Drive package is an example they gave for that as well. Um, yeah, at least I have one example of that. Mm -hmm. So I know the Inla package. You probably know it, like. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And this 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 is not a CRAN package. And the documentation is like, uh, I think, work a bit like that. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. This is like the one person, like, yeah. specific cases. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and lot I can of imagine, function. Like, yeah. GIS. I imagine, yeah. I imagine a lot of GIS things because they just, I mean, you try and install them on your in R and it just it takes like you go away for a cup of tea and come back but it's become later, better which, now <laughs> yeah it's become I, better it's basically like the default is like because like you need GDAL good yeah. whatever you call it and uh it's a wrapper of a library so this yeah. GDAL like it's calling a bunch of other libraries to read a bunch of formats and you just need to collect them all so <laughs> yeah but no, like with the Jack at Bootle tools, like the Air to You, if you are using Linux, it's 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 I mean Ubuntu. It's uh, the you have the pre-built binary and it's super fast. I have uh, to. Yeah. Yes, I definitely like if you are trouble building SF. I um I still have trouble, by the way, in Mac in some uh, GDAL config uh, with the Mac whatever one they call. But like yeah. Yeah, I remember SF was the one that took ages for me. I think maybe yeah. was it's, it's because of GDAL. Yeah, the, the same is leaflet one as well, or Terra or something else. Yeah, the same. Terra, Terra need GDAL too. Every stuff ah. that need like input <laughs> and you output in special data will basically yeah. use the GDAL library, and the GDAL uh, library is like a super library. <laughs> yeah, it's super big. It's like one hundred megabytes, something like that. Yeah, just yeah. for C. <laughs> 
I remember like opening a REN file and I was like, oh crap, if I push that to GitHub, they're not going to be happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. So the last part was development mode, which I, I think they may be still polishing this because it doesn't read super clearly, but um, basically development mode allows you to have more than one website. Um, and showing you like your release version. So the one that they would get from CRAN with install.packages, um, or if you're doing development past that point and you've got updated your website, it can show a dev version, a developer version of it, um, which has some different tags on it. Um, so basically in the, the config file, the, this YAML file, there is a field called mode and you can set it to release development auto and there's one other um which i probably should have just added in um and these things will do different stuff so release is the default and the site gets written to docs and they recommend just using that if you have a small user base because it generally doesn't matter too much um it'll generate a single site but a user downloading from cran may get documentation from your development documents um, so for instance a, a function that doesn't exist and they suggest that if you get a question from a user saying hey what's going on here i don't understand i can't use this function um, that's when you should probably start using either the devl or the auto um, arguments in that that yaml field um, devil are you yeah, uh, get man sense if you have like a lot of users and and doing a lot of change also like probably yeah. like and and like have like some let's say constraint release like let's say you want to release every six months but then you are developing like related to pull request and all the stuff and then you have devil version yeah, yeah. It, it, it's nice to have but like yeah yeah definitely it, it's good like this well, it's probably have like the use case so. yeah yeah, and they, they, they suggested like auto is the one you should use once you get like a broader base of people. And that's what yeah. they use for like tidyverse packages because, you know, they've got obviously a huge, huge base and, and lots of development going on. Um, yeah, and the dev, devil thing basically and the auto thing, all it's doing is creating a folder called dev. Um, it gets a danger class and you'll get like different colors on the page and it all looks, you know, there's things that warn people that you're using a development version. It also has a no index tag and that stops uh, search engines indexing that site as well. Oh. So people just don't accidentally stumble across it, I guess. Um, I guess this is something that I should do like for this package that are uh, like uh, published with yeah. it. Like, I should just just the uh, no index tag. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a nice trick. Yeah. And so it changes the URL as well which is um, okay. so reader.tidyverse.org um, is your release version. And then slash dev is when it's a development version. I think that was about it. Oh, yeah, the final right. um, yeah, the final um, one was um, unreleased, I think, which oh. I don't really understand what it meant. But if, if you go to the, the documents, it tells you more. Yeah. Unreleased yeah. is too dangerous. Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't know when that because if it's unreleased, who's going to see it? Kind of thing, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. thanks a lot. No worries. Like, yeah. Good job on two chapters. Like, cheers. Yeah. Dang. Next yeah. next week is me. I have a lot of work to do. Okay. Yeah. What you got next it. Week? Software yeah. development practices. Awesome. Oh wow! Look so <laughs> empty, so clean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can rearrange so much of the book. Yeah. Software yeah. development practices, like my God. I will be preaching. Like, okay. <laughs> preaching, yeah. yeah. Preaching the you should do that. Well, I you know, I have probably no experience at all into that, but yeah, okay. <laughs> I will do that. Yeah. You shall have a stand-up meeting before developing. <laughs> yeah. Do agile Organize methodology. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Test everything. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, thanks a uh -huh. lot. Yeah. And, uh, well, I'll see you next week. Sort out this dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
No, but like, yeah. Uh, mine, mine is sleeping. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm also a bit sleeping, but yeah, I think like this part makes sense. I mean, you explain it well, so yes, all nice. dog sleeping. We did like a three plus mile walk. Ah, she's so cute. <laughs> Wait, is it a boy or a yeah. girl? Uh, boy. Yeah. Boy, Reno. What, what a collie. He's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Named after a podocarp tree as well. Would be interested in that, but yeah. <laughs> on New Zealand's can't, trees. Can't so. see. Yeah, yeah, I was, but no, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just doing pipelines. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, what it was maybe I mentioned this. It was like forest economics or something, like oh yeah, forest management or something at Lincoln University. Uh, so all I remember is like we did some like evaluation of whether or not it was worth it to like invest in yeah. like, like crop and, and like if you should prune in this year i don't know <laughs> that, that i'm you know like them they have like this saying like uh, in forestry like you have two uh two like two part of forestry one is like uh well for, I mean, um, forest ecology, let's say. And the other one is like neoliberalism. <laughs> yeah. And I, it's it's also sad, but it's sadly true. But yeah, a lot of forests are very like, and the way they are managed, like there's just assets. <laughs> yeah. Which there's is, so much like, there's like, I, I don't know, I think they kind of need to start valuing biodiversity and building that into the hmm. models because you just got these giant like monocultures of pine trees all across new zealand and yeah and then people are like oh these things are going extinct no it, <laughs> it, it's true like it's not like unnecessarily against it it's just like for like random people uh they totally have a different kind of perception of the forest and when yeah. we discuss like with like forest guy like it's just like he could talk to you to his bond the same way <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, it's just great like um there's like the I, i've still not read this book but like it's called what's the name of it it's for an american like authors it's like he it, said like you have like an opposition between like uh two kind of forestry like the ones that he called like the traditional one it's not, not calling that the traditional one he said like wine forest i think that's the name of the book paul nace is famous I can't remember and it explained like the this too like uh, what you said like as one part of the public that wants like a forest let's say with more biodiversity and stuff like that and another part that just wants to optimize stuff yeah <laughs> and that do not like each other <laughs> yeah it's, it's, I guess it's taking on like a whole new thing with cabin credits and stuff as well oh yeah <laughs> my god like I, I I have I have seen like um, an auto managed forest with um uh, carbon credit and how do you call that like the uh you know like the uh, the the bond agent like the crypto they can sell themselves basically yeah <laughs> so yeah. they basically estimate when they come to sell themselves and ask like so they 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 totally automate that part yeah but this was totally experimental and and weird. But yeah, this is like what the name was the forest. Let's see if I can find it. Nails, nails, all nails. Yeah. Uh, I can't find it. Anyway, I, I will I will post it in the chat later. So I I go to bed with it. Good. <laughs> I'll read it after my YAML documentation. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> did Did you check that? Like. Yeah, you know, I'm just like, looking at that. You know, you know, Markdown, the 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 standard of Markdown, which is that yeah. plenty of standards, is like a badge and half. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I like this YAML TM rhymes with camel. It's <laughs> that's a good start. Like, <laughs> <I've got> <laughs> <laughs> see, it will, you will not be able to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. Goodbye. All right. Good night. Thanks for presenting. Yeah, see you no later. Worries. Thanks. Pleasure. Yeah. Bye.